Um, Danny, thanks very much. Uh, my name is Jim Poplinski, and uh, I got um, involved with this particular initiative. Uh, I'll explain it briefly uh, later on, but um, because I, I think it's quite important. So thank you for taking uh, your lunch hour to participate in this. I hope you've got a, a sandwich and a coffee or a glass of water to uh, nourish yourselves while we're going through this. Uh, we certainly appreciate you sending in your questions, uh, and uh, we've grouped those into, into uh, common categories, and we'll be going through those shortly. And uh, for listening to four of Calgary's mayoralty candidates, uh, these are impressive individuals, and uh, we really believe that that getting them involved in initiatives like this and giving them an opportunity to speak to to their constituents or future constituents uh, is important leading up to any election, um, so that uh, all participants, including the candidates, can uh, gather uh, information uh, where the candidates in the election are positioned uh, on what issues that will impact our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, our audience is predominantly from the technology, innovation, small, medium uh, enterprise uh, communities in Calgary. Uh, and we certainly hope that you agree that keeping informed on these decisions that will be made when it comes to our community is crucial to uh, your community's success and growth. Uh, the panel is intended to provide an opportunity for each candidate to communicate their priorities when it comes to technology, entrepreneurship, SHMI, uh, innovation, and the vibrancy of Calgary. Uh, this is an opportunity for candidates to express themselves, to clarify and differentiate themselves uh, and their platforms. It's not a debate that's intended to be a professional discussion where people treat one another with respect. And if you happen to come on uh, early, uh, you'd see that there's, a, that there's a nice rapport between the four of them and, uh, and hopefully it stays that way and uh, the best person wins uh, to drive this uh, city forward. To the extent um, uh, there are any issues, I'll address how those get dealt with. Uh, uh, today, our candidates are Bradfield, Jen Damery, Jeff Davison, and Jeremy Farkas. Uh, Jan, Brad, Jeff, Jeremy, thank you very much for uh, the energy that you've put into your past contributions to our community uh, and uh, and for throwing your head in the wing in the ring uh, to become the mayor. This is uh, it's it's important and it's really nice to see uh, on this go around uh, candidates more more candidates and more quality candidates than what uh, my view would be of the last go round. So thank you for for participating and uh, and good luck to all of you. Uh, we've we've put a link for the candidate bios uh, in the invite. You should be able to find that uh, someplace in. Um, in this Zoom meeting, if you if you want to take a look at a little deeper dive on the candidates, you can certainly go to their websites. We'd encourage you to do that, and uh, and we may we may have a mechanism to help you uh, look across all the information that uh, that is uh, is posted in various forms. Uh, we're also joined by Danny Finch. Danny is the marketing and communications director at Curve. She's a reformed journalist. She calls herself a former journalist. I'd say reformed journalist, and she's an active member of uh, Calgary's technology and innovation community. Uh, since she moved here from Winter Peg in uh, 2018. Um, thank you very much to the sponsors of this event, particularly uh, Stuart O'Connor and Jay Gohill of, of our curve. Uh, for anybody who's dealt with, with our curve, you know they're, they're first class and to, to get the technology uh, community uh, in a uh, uh, concerted effort to get in front of the candidates, I think is a great idea. So uh, our curve, thank you very much for putting this together and the other sponsors as well. And now for some house, housekeeping, the discussion will be a round table style. All candidates will have an opportunity to answer each question within a two minute time window. Hopefully that's lots of time. Danny will be letting each respondent see the remaining time in the chat function uh, to the side of their screen. Uh, you get extra points if you beat the clock. If you're <laughs> as old as me, you remember that game. So try to beat the clock, uh, try to be concise. In the elect unlikely event, there's a heated discussion where, where candidates are talking over one another. I will act as referee. I have some experience of that. And uh, the first penalty will be high sticking and afterwards um, we may have to go to major. So hopefully that's not required. And uh, and we can take the question seriously, but not take ourselves too seriously and have a little bit of fun with it. Audience members can certainly ask real time questions in the in the tab on Zoom. Um, hopefully we get something different than what we've already have, but um, there's a pretty broad range that we've that we've already accumulated from uh, your invites. So that's uh, that's very encouraging, but feel free to put your questions on the side. Stuart O'Connor is monitoring those, and to the extent there's anything unique or new, uh, we'll try to get that in at the end. 
depending on the speed at which we roll through the already provided questions uh, from you, we may have some additional time to address what comes up on the, uh, on the side panel. Uh, I'll ask each candidate the same question and rotate through the candidates in an order that changes with each question. So each person will not necessarily always be first. Uh, as much as politics is and has been a blood sport, our intention is to have a professional, enjoyable, insightful, educational conversation that leaves each participant more informed than when they join the event. With that said, uh, let's pull the Band-Aid off and, uh, and jump into it. Um, I'll start with, uh, with Brad. Uh, Danny, would you add anything? Have I forgotten uh, anything that you want to clean up? You have done swimmingly, Jim. Okay, and then Brad, we'll, we'll start with you and then go to Jeremy and Jan and, uh, and Jim. Uh, what role do you believe the city should play in growing and diversifying uh, our economy? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for organizing this. Yeah, there's no question the city has to play a role around diversification and into technology. Um, I, I made it clear right from the get go. I am. Uh, I don't think it's the mayor or the council's position to pick winners and losers. It's our job and our responsibility to create the environment where any business in the city of Calgary uh, can grow and succeed and create jobs. Uh, that being said, uh, I love having discussions uh, with different people uh, around the city of Calgary that are actively involved. Uh, you look at Jim Gibson with SAIT and Terry Rock at Platform and uh, Allison Anderson and Bull Valley. They've all got great plans in place uh, to diverse and create a new environment here in the city of Calgary. I think the city's role is to, pray, uh, is to play facilitator and remove uh, barriers. Uh, again, uh, we have to have a clear line of sight, uh, both from a tax perspective perspective. We have to be nimble. Uh, quite often, I think we get uh, drugged down in, uh, in bureaucracy uh, at the city, uh, and we have to be nimble in, in a fast-growing uh, technology sector. If we're going to be able to diversify, we have to be nimble, uh, making sure that we have that Made in Calgary talent pipeline. And when we're talking about 21st century companies wanting to be in Calgary, we have to make sure that they have the talent available here in the city of Calgary. And that's making sure that our post-secondary students are coming out with uh, uh, meaningful jobs in their chosen professions. That's about creating downtown co-op programs, partnering with uh, local businesses, making sure that uh, we repopulate the downtown core with that next generation. Uh, so yeah, lots to talk about uh, again, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, Laura Kilcrease from uh, Alberta Innovates uh, worked with uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, I think uh, we can dovetail into a lot of the stuff that's gone on in different uh, municipalities uh, around North America. Uh, and create something real special for the city of Calgary. So uh, uh, thanks for your time and appreciate the question. Thanks, Brad. Jeremy, do you want to take a crack at the same one? Sure. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, man. Great. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Uh, rather than dive into the what, I'd maybe start with the why. So back in 2015, I joined uh, the City of Calgary Hackathon. And if you're not familiar, it's a summit of mostly young people, entrepreneurs, coders, software engineers. They trap about 200 to 300 of us in a room for a weekend. They give us a really tough uh, problem to solve. And whoever comes up with the best idea basically gets a big cash prize, photo opportunity with the mayor, and all the accolades to, to go on and save the world. And it was back in 2015 that I joined the City of Calgary Hackathon. I met up with a group of about six or seven others like me just starting out in their 20s. And we came up with a great idea that uh, we thought would have been able to make us some money, give us a job, offer something of value to others. And it was by the end of the weekend that we actually won first place. So somewhere in the basement of City Hall, there's this giant size photo uh, or giant size check, uh, me holding it, uh, shaking hands with Mary Nenshi. And it was really the best weekend of my life. But unfortunately, we lived in Calgary. And because of lack of City Hall support uh, regulations, particularly around open data, uh, we couldn't actually proceed with our idea, despite the fact that it was possible in places like Edmonton, Vancouver, and elsewhere. And it really broke my heart. We have this story that we tell ourselves of Calgary being open for business, about being entrepreneurial, about having a can-do attitude. And we are all of those things. And Calgarians especially are all of those things. But our city hall really isn't. And it was by the end of that year that many of my compatriots actually left Calgary for other places that were hungry for that talent and investment. So that's why I chose to run for city council in the first place, was to get city hall out of the way. And I think this election is about change versus more of the same. And if elected mayor, I'm going to focus on three priorities. First, a strong and growing economy based on financial responsibility at city hall. Next, open and transparent government that better includes Calgarians in the decision-making process. 
And lastly, uh, secure and vibrant communities through support for our police and other essential services. So I think Calgarians have what it takes to really come back stronger than ever, but it's gonna take City Hall working for the people again. So in a nutshell, I think City Hall needs to get out of the way. And again, this is about change versus more of the same. And I've been there, I've lived the experience. And I wanna make sure no Calgarian goes through what I had to. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Jen, um, number three, fire away. All right, so great to be here. And I know I, I, a lot of familiar faces that I can't see, but I'm, I'm getting notes that they're actually online. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm, I'm running for mayor, I'm Jan Damer running for mayor because I so believe in the potential of this city and many of you know that I've been working alongside many of you coaching a lot of our startup CEO uh, in the tech and innovation space the last four years. And so for me, this is about really um, being that change in leadership, actual leadership that is created because we're not seeing uh, in this past council, in fact, they've gotten away uh, in the way of this sector, really, really thriving. Um, and so I am motivated about really much about paying back and paying forward the great opportunities the city has given me. And it's about bringing people together. We need leadership to bring us out of this, to shine the light on all the amazing green shoots that are starting to appear. So Jim, to your question, what is the role of the city? It is to create that environment, that, that environment and vibrancy that people want to be here. Many of you may know that I've got a 24 year old that left the city last year because he could not find a job here, did not see potential here. This is the narrative we've got to change. And so what you're gonna see in my platform, very detailed platform, and it's very much about supercharging this tech and innovation sector. It's about bringing us all together to generate 80,000 new jobs. We can become the energy transition and green tech center globally. It's about making Calgary the place to be, to live, learn, work and play by making and bringing the cool back to Calgary. So projects like the train from YYC to downtown to Banff, putting a surf park on the Bow River. Imagine a tech startup CEO going to be able to surf on the Bow River over lunch and then coming back to really drive his business forward. It's about supercharging also our post-secondary so we can start to scale and really fill the talent pipeline that we have a huge deficit in this city. And that's by actually working with all of our post-secondaries to ensure we've got campuses downtown. We've got students living, working downtown. Downtown becomes a neighborhood and there are things to do. So this is about very much bringing us all together in this positive way and vision. Leadership is about vision and mobilizing collective action. And if you've been watching council for the last four years, we have not seen that. They have been battling each other there's been lots of no's. We've left dollars on the table in terms of investing in infrastructure, important projects that actually are continuing to go despite the fact that we've left a billion dollars off when several of the existing councillors said no to the Olympics. So Jim, I'm offering my specific leadership, extensive leadership. I'm known to be a leader that leads leaders, brings people together to get things done, big things done. Look forward to your support as we go forward. Awesome, thanks um, Jen. Jim. Jim, over to you, uh, just to repeat the question, what role do you believe the city should play in growing and diversifying the economy? Are you talking to me? You keep calling me Jim, it's Jeff. You're Jim. Oh, jeez, jeez, you know what? That freaking Davidson, he's in my head. Thank I know. you for that. Oh, everywhere. Yeah. Oh, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, Jeff, you start calling me Jeff. I, I thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Sorry. Jeff um, everyone. <laughs> Okay, we've spent too much time together, Jim. Um, look, I think the city's role is really thinking about how do we diversify our offering and how do we how do we be a different place to be in a world where capital and talent are extremely mobile. And so, thinking about how are we going to attract talent differently because around the world, people are people are moving to those affordable, livable, socially stable cities that uh, are, are competing faster and differently than us. We've really got to think about how we're going to future-proof our economy and, and actively support growth sectors that build upon our strengths and things like energy and agriculture, as well as going after all of these new opportunities that are being presented to Calgary. Uh, continuous learning is going to be a, a huge piece of the puzzle that, you know, we really have to think about how we make innovation an even bigger part of our civic culture and, and frankly, our collective brand. And then focusing on authentic collaboration and accelerating business through an environment that is friendly to accelerating uh, opportunities here. I think I've spent the last four years on Calgary Economic Development. I've been fortunate enough to be Council's representative on the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. 
you know, that fund right now is, is a huge differentiating tool that we have that's unique to Calgary. We're now partnering with the Alberta government through Invest Alberta, Innovates Alberta. This is an acceleration tool to get people focused on Calgary with a 15 to one now rate of return on it. And so I work with all the players around us, whether that's the provincial government, the private sector, the tech startup to think about how we accelerate investment here and how we create regulatory changes to enable uh, these businesses to succeed. And I think it's working to get people to say yes to this jurisdiction in a world where we have to differentiate ourselves through placemaking and providing opportunity where, you know, Calgary is a place people want to be, not need to be. Business environment, focusing on innovation, and then really solving the big problem is talent. Because if we can't attract the people to Calgary, we'll never attract the businesses. We'll never scale up our opportunities that are here. Right on. Thanks a lot, uh, Jeff. Very much appreciated. Jeremy, uh, back to you. Edmonton provided $5 million to advance their tech community. Uh, if you're elected mayor, how would you support the tech community? I am not familiar with what Edmonton has done in particular as far as that $5 million, but I think we need to create a fertile environment. We need to ensure that regardless of your business or background, you have the opportunity to succeed. I see a number of successive decisions by council actually eroding our competitive advantage. First one is this push to defund the police, I believe has uh, eroded particularly the downtown's ability to stay vibrant and as a destination of choice. Uh, I believe strongly to be, be able to address safety and security concerns for the downtown core. Another piece is around flood mitigation, making sure that if uh, investors or talent are going to choose Calgary's downtown, that they continue to uh, feel safe in that. Another piece is again around vibrancy, being much more welcoming of festivals, events, that sort of thing, so you can retain that talent. Something I've done uh, personally in my time as a member of council is to be able to support the City of Calgary restoring its summer student hiring program as another way to be able to ensure that there's that uh, access to talent and the city is available as one of the city's largest employers uh, for mentorship, uh, skills training, development. We need to ensure that we're working closely with post-secondary education institutions to ensure that uh, there's the space that they need uh, downtown, explore other uh, pieces of the city of Calgary's uh, land or uh, lease holdings. Other things I'd like to see is uh, to ensure that, uh, say, startups that are attempting to get off the ground don't face the same challenges that I personally experienced. So I'm in support of mandatory approvals, uh, say, setting a time limit to be able to get uh, approval to be able to get your project off the ground. The city has to say yes within a certain uh, span of time. And if they don't say yes, then they need to make sure it's a no with certain conditions. And if you can solve for the conditions, then uh, you can get off to the races. Other pieces around, say, finance and tech. I know that there's a strong interest now in blockchain, cryptocurrency. As one of the city's largest uh, vendors and procurers, I think uh, that there's an opportunity for the city of Calgary to start, say, uh, accepting fee or property tax payments uh, with Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, other ways. Uh, but it, again, it comes back to creating that fertile environment so that it's not the politicians or the city hall bureaucrats picking winners and losers, but it's enabling that uh, fertile environment. Thanks, Jeremy. Jen, um, how would you support the tech community? Thanks very much. Um, I think there's a huge role that the mayor can play in being the signal booster for this for this sector. And it actually hasn't happened, as I'm seeing in the chat, lots of questions about OSIF and views on OSIF. And it's a very good example where we've actually ignored a lot of our grassroots companies that are starting to scale and they weren't able to qualify for OSIF. And in many respects, didn't want to qualify because of the arduous requirements that they actually had on the front end um, uh, fulfill, in addition to the reporting requirements on the back end hugely bureaucratic, which is getting in the way of innovation. So this again is about ensuring we've got a vibrant city that people want, are attracted to and that we're supporting this homegrown ecosystem. It's one of the reasons in my platform detail plans on how we supercharge this sector. And remembering too that tech is not a vertical. It's not gonna replace oil and gas. It's horizontal. It touches every industry um, that we already are big in. We often don't talk about agriculture that is also going through a huge revolution in addition to traditional oil and gas. So we have the ability to become leaders in energy transitions, in tech, in biotech, and it's about creating that environment. But we've got to ensure that we're attracting the talent and growing the talent here. And I think we can actually, through the city, supercharge also our post-secondary so we can scale the number of graduates, but also ensure that we're investing in vibrant um, infrastructure and things to do. So I'm a big pro on the arena, on, on the uh, entertainment center, on the arts commons, 
And we often forget that artists are entrepreneurs themselves. And how are we supporting that? And, and, and that they can have livelihoods that actually really invest in the main streets. So this is about both talent and that we have a cool place that people wanna be in. That's how we support the tech sector. And the mayor has a huge role to play in that. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Jeff, do you wanna pick up on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, you know, this is the problem with a lot of politicians. We, we take a question that's given to us and then we drive it in a different direction to uh, suit our narrative. The question is, how would we compete, you know, with Edmonton providing $5 million into tech, what, how do we compete differently? Well, number one, we have the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. It's a $100 million fund. So I don't know if that's enough, but it certainly is a huge differentiator. And again, that's providing a 15 to one rate of return. It is now scaled up differently where we are seeing uh, the creation of funds of funds through the private sector, other orders of government, as well as the city, where we're going to accelerate that because I, I agree, over the last four years, we've really transitioned the fund into being something that can now be much more applicable to the grassroots local companies that are looking to scale up as well as an attraction tool to uh, to really magnify the, the types of organizations we're bringing here. I totally understand that doom and gloom gets uh, gets the votes, but the reality is uh, what we need if we really want to accelerate technology here is an environment that, propose, that promotes security and certainty around investment. Uh, you know, when we talk about Calgary being the uh, the place where people want to go. People look at place, they look at talent abilities, they look at innovation, they look at business environment. And when we talk about bringing emphasis or emphasis or companies of such to Calgary, the number one conversation we have with them is in and around talent. Do we have the necessary pipeline of talent to scale businesses up here? It's almost never about taxes. Taxes have become table stakes in the conversation. It's about talent and people. You know, we have to recognize that uh, people used to chase companies and now companies chase talent. And so that is one of the big draws that we can differentiate ourselves in. And so is our fund enough? No, probably not. Is it enough to make the, uh, these companies look at us and, and, and differentiate Calgary because of uh, our value proposition in the money? Absolutely it is. So I would continue to push on things like the opportunities with the private sector and the provincial government to, to accelerate funding like this, to draw more technology and talent into the, into the city. Thanks, Jeff. Brad, uh, what would you say to how you support the tech community? Brad, you're still on mute. I, I how, many, probably, how many times I, in the last year has that happened? <laughs> I probably should have muted myself first so that one of you didn't have to. But anyway, go, go Does ahead. Does that cut into my time? <laughs> no, no, we'll take that as a and it, we'll take that as a poor attempt at humor. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I dovetail into the OSIF discussion. You know, there's no question that we have to look at uh, uh, you know the the upside, the positive uh, factor of OSIF fund. But the other part of it, it's all about job creation. You know, whether you're talking agribusiness, uh, fintech, all these different industries, it's about job creation. And uh, the challenge I have around the OSIF fund, as many jobs as we gained. Uh, through the uh, OSIF fund, we probably lost 10 times that because of our uh, property tax issues, uh, bureaucracy, the roadblocks here in the city of Calgary for our existing businesses that are already here in the city of Calgary. So um, there's no question we can look at that differently. But when we look at supporting the tech sector, let's talk about Platform Calgary. Look at that wonderful parkade that we've got. So it's investing in infrastructure too as well. In uh, I toured with Terry Rock, the second floor, and they've got this wonderful pit stage uh, set up there. Uh, you know, I firmly believe Calgary has the opportunity to hit that 3,000 new startups here in the city of Calgary by 2030. We could be the next Silicon Valley. Uh, it's a matter of re uh, removing those regulatory roadblocks to get in the way. Uh, the other thing, too, if we want to send a signal to the world uh, that we are all about technology, let's talk about open, uh, open data sourcing here at the city of Calgary. Have full data transparency within the city of Calgary. Open up our data. Um, that sends a signal to uh, the tech sector that we're truly open uh, to next, next technology. And it also creates an environment where the private sector can take the data from the city of Calgary on any given issue and create solutions for the city of Calgary. So um, I think it's a, a, there's lots of work to be done here. I just want to carry on the conversation, make sure that the stakeholders are at the table right from the get-go. I keep saying that on any issues, making sure that everybody's at the table right from the start will make things a lot easier, but we've got a massive opportunity here uh, to build something special, something we can all be proud of. Right on, Jeremy. Um, 
sorry, did I mute myself? No. Okay, sorry. Uh, so we're on to uh, um, question number three. Uh, over your career, how, how over your career so far, how have you engaged with Calgary's tech and entrepreneurial community? Jan, do you want to start with that one? Absolutely. Please? I'm a, I'm a mentee, a mentor with the uh, venture venture mentor service of Alberta. Um, so this is a really cool program uh, that uh, coaches and mentors uh, startup uh, CEOs in the tech innovation space that are starting to scale their businesses locally. Uh, it's actually modeled after a program at MIT. And I plugged into that sector about um, four years ago. Um, I was uh, asked to actually join uh, the team of amazing mentors, uh, just, you know, with amazing people that have actually really built this ecosystem. So we already talked about a, you know, what, Pierre Joanne and Jim Gibson and Alice Reimer are all part of my colleagues on this program. And this is where you actually see the barriers that face our entrepreneurs because we talk about being an entrepreneur in the city and we do not support our entrepreneurs, both in the environment, uh, how we get in the way and even how we actually connect them to markets globally. We have focused on so much on outsiders coming in. That's actually been at the heart of some of the CED strategy. And there's been lots of conflict in the ecosystem between platform and CED. And I've witnessed this firsthand because of actually having a seat at the table. So I am committed and this is uh, to this sector and something that has so inspired me because despite all of these challenges and changing the narrative about just being an oil and gas town, there is amazing innovation going on that just needs to be having more air and oxygen. And so as mayor, I'm just again committed to boosting this sector. Uh, local is where it's at. And how do we support the growth in this ecosystem, both from an education standpoint to address the talent deficit we've got all the way to actually attracting opportunities because like attracts like, and this is how you scale businesses. So thanks very much. Thanks, Jim. Jeff, over to you. Sorry, Jim, can you repeat that question? Uh, you betcha. So far, how have you engaged with Calgary's tech and uh, entrepreneur community over your career? Yeah, I mean, thanks. Uh, you know, I think I've been fortunate, like I say, to have been council's representative on Calgary Economic Development over the past four years. Uh, the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund, the Calgary Film Center uh, have been past uh, taking technology companies public. Um, so in and around everything I do is focused on technology. And I really do think that everything from the scale up of Energy 2.0 and, and commercially viable decarbonization projects that we're bringing into the city, all the way through to agriculture and looking at how we are uh, helping solve the next big global crisis, which is food sustainability. And so Calgary really has a leadership role to play in a lot of these things and continuing to enable that. Um, I know there was a couple of conversations just going on in the chat here that I just wanted to, to answer quick, Jim, because I think the conversation was in and around, uh, you know, why are we not focused so much on, on technology and focused on uh, filling up office spaces uh, with respect to OSIF? Uh, you know, when, when the previous council started the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund, it was actually focused on how do we fix the downtown? Since then, we've really thought differently about what that fund means. And, and it's really much more of a tool that is focused on building an ecosystem rather than filling office space. And I was happy to be one of the counselors who brought the initiative forward on the downtown strategy, which is really taking that out of the technology conversation and focusing on the placemaking of downtown so that we, we look at these things as two separate pieces now, not in trying to solve the same, because we, we need to stop thinking in silos and start thinking about how do these programs that we have here in Calgary work together. And so uh, for me, you know, we have seen a, an incredible scale up of technology over the past four years here. I think it's really highlighting the fact that our value proposition here in Calgary is, is affordability and quality of life. People want to be in Calgary. They, they want to be here. We just need to set the right jobs and the right opportunities so that we continue to grow the city in that direction. Thanks, Jeff. Brad, uh, would you like the question repeated or are you good to go with it? Thanks. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I started my first business here um, in Calgary 40, over 40 years ago at age 12 and bought my first real estate as a teenager. So entrepreneurship uh, is in my blood. And uh, I've been a 20 year member of YPO, Young, Profes uh, Young Presidents Organization, a worldwide organization. So I spent lots of time mentoring. Um, you know, for me, it's, you know, Calgary's got this vibrancy, Calgary's got this entrepreneurial approach to everything, but making myself available to anybody at any time for mentorship role. I teach board governance in, uh, in uh, the community sector uh, with uh, volunteer uh, community associations. 
and you know just making yourself available for time uh, around the tech industry i've sat in on many pitch sessions uh, and I'm not a tech person. I'm the first one to uh, to acknowledge that. But I love being able to uh, to uh, lend my business acumen around the structure of uh, structure of any industry, any sector. Uh, so I've built, bought, and sold businesses in different industry sectors in multiple countries around the world, uh, ranging from healthcare to fire suppression to heavy equipment repair to real estate. And so for me, having that entrepreneurial connection and being able to communicate with entrepreneurs and uh, uh, business operators here in the city of Calgary. It's some of the best uh, experiences of my life. And so I just continue having those conversations and uh, super excited about the future of Calgary and what, what, what we have in store for us. Thanks, Brad. Jeremy, uh, you've, you've got deep roots in this. Uh, take a crack at it, please. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Just in a, in a personal way, I've always tried to make myself available, participating in, uh, say, the Schaefer Mentorship Program at Mount Royal University, as well as Scholars Academy through the U of C, uh, mentoring young leaders. I believe that post-secondary and talent piece is essential, supporting partnerships, uh, say with the University of Calgary to make uh, city land more available. I've attended roundtable meetings and I've learned so much. And it's also helped uh, give me a view not to necessarily reinvent the wheel at the city or to necessarily hire new city employees, but instead bring in some of the talent out there to offer their best advice and tools and technology to adjust challenges we're facing, say around uh, development, safety, I've supported the city's efforts to make more data available through the open data catalog, everything from uh, GIS to say city council voting records, I've supported funding for uh, say the hackathon, which I've mentioned. I've helped local businesses through uh, say permitting uh, approvals to be able to get uh, their offices up and running. I've also advocated for reform to OSIF so that the funds out the door can be to the benefit of everybody on a level playing field rather than say uh, trying to poach uh, business to come from Red Deer. I think that we need a team Alberta approach and going forward I'm advocating for four-year property tax freeze. I'm also championing the uh, energy industry is not just oil and gas but a lot of the the incredible stories, talent and uh, outcomes that uh, everyday Calgarians on the ground are delivering here in Calgary. So I think our next mayor is going to have to really ch champion and carry forward the message to remind Calgarians about everything that's going well in the city, but also remind the rest of Canada and the rest of North America that if you want to be uh, part of something, then Calgary is the place to be. So it's an ongoing uh, work in progress, but I'm never the smartest person in the room. I'm always uh, so grateful that so many business leaders, entrepreneurs make themselves available to me. And uh, my vision again is for the mayor and council to get out of the way to be able to enable and support the great work that's uh, being done every single day in this community. Thanks, Jeremy. This th this next question, Jeff, we're going to start with you. It might be just an extension of the previous one, but um, do your best at it. What what makes you a legitimate candidate to represent change and investment that may be required to support the city's efforts to diversify aggressively into the technology sector? I, I honestly believe that uh, past behavior is a good indication of future behavior. And so as the one who's actually been striving for it and, and you know, trying to really bring in the experts, build the plans, it's now time to get the work done. And I think when we look around at politics these days, there's a lot of talk that goes on. There's a lot of strategies that are initiated, uh, but strategy isn't worth the paper it's printed on if you never execute it. And so having a proven track record of taking on some frankly pretty hairy files at the city of Calgary and finding the path forward has, has really been uh, the highlight, I think, of what I've done over the past four years and, and where we're gonna go in the future. I think it's not just about thinking about, you know, what's the right business environment. It's about thinking about placemaking. You know, that's why I'm investing in things like the entertainment and cultural district, right? Thinking about giving people a reason to want to be downtown uh, and want to be in Calgary rather than need to be in a world where uh, things are extremely mobile. Uh, but really focusing on innovation and talent is, is really been what we've been trying to do. And so the big push I've had over the past four years is getting the multiple levels of government together, get working with the post-secondaries, working with the private sector and getting everybody to move in, in the same direction. Uh, and, and I think, you know, when it comes to city building and, and really transforming the economy, it's OK for us to agree that uh, we're all driving in our own cars down the highway. But we've got to agree that we're going to the right place. And I think that's the vision that I bring to the table here is that let's set the direction and the outcome of what we're trying to achieve and let's work together to make sure it happens. Brad, uh, what makes you a legitimate candidate to represent change and investment that may be required to support the city's efforts to diversify aggressively into the tech sector? 
Well, I, and again, I think it goes back to track record. Uh, I've actually built businesses. I've actually created jobs in multiple jurisdictions around the world in different industry sectors. So, uh, you know, it's easy to talk about it until you've done it, until you've been responsible for paychecks uh, and building uh, teams out and, and creating those jobs and those environments where people can succeed. Um, it's, it's a different story. So that's what I would bring differently. I've also worked with federal, state, provincial, and municipal governments all over the world. So I, I, I feel like I've got the best um, uh, skill set because I've done it in the private sector, but I've also worked uh, within the government sectors as well too at all levels. So having those skill sets, uh, and again, when it comes to technology specifically, uh, it's all about supporting and being open-minded to new ideas. And again, I go back to making sure that Calgary is an open, uh, open data source. Uh, where the technology sector here in the city of Calgary can access data right from the city of Calgary and uh, and turn it into something special within uh, within our organization as a city or but uh, also in the private sector. So I think my skill sets uh, uh, get on both sides of the line. I've done it uh, at all levels in different countries and and also in the private sector. I've also worked alongside uh, union employees as a private sector contractor. So I've been a vendor with the city of Calgary for 25 years. Uh, so I see uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, I've been able to work through it over the years. And uh, so I'm super excited about the opportunity to bring my skill set to the city of Calgary. Yeah, thank you. Jeremy, um, over to you. Thanks. And I, I think this election is really about change versus more of the same. And as candidates, uh, we're going to say a lot of the same things. So I think the question for the, the tech community and voters at large is, who do you have confidence in to be able to execute? So I have experience at council. I've shown a willingness to stand up, not just when it's been easy, but frankly, when it's been hard. And if you're out, if you're coming from outside of council, I think the bureaucracy and the administration will really have their way with you. And I think that's the experience that Mayor Nenshi had as a reformer, not knowing enough about how city hall worked. The moment that he was elected, I think he lost track on a lot of those initial promises. And as far as my voting record at council, I think I've put my money where my mouth is. Unlike others, uh, say who campaigned on reform, I actually followed through and say, turn down the, the generous city council golden pension because I believe strongly in leadership uh, by example. Other candidates uh, talk a good game, but for example, uh, how can you be talking about support for post-secondary uh, uh, institutions if say you voted against uh, allowing summer students to be able to work at the city to receive skills training, mentorship and all of the rest. And lastly, it comes down to, I think, affordability, ensuring you have somebody who's willing and able to make those tough decisions. And this election matters more than anything else. This election is the most important that uh, I think our city is going to experience uh, in, in the lifetime of our community. And I think that we need to elect leadership that frankly knows how City Hall works, but also has a proven record of actually backing up a lot of the, the statements and, and the words that we've said. So thank you for uh, your consideration. Jen, uh, wrap this question up, please. With pleasure. We are at a huge crossroads in this city. And I think the defining issue in this election is getting the right person in the mayorship seat. It's about leadership and it's about demonstrated leadership. Um, and I've offered my um, kind of candidacy in this race because I have worked in all sectors in a leadership capacity. I'm known to be an entrepreneur working in very complex organizations that actually, and what I mean by that is about innovating in these. So in my days at TransCanada, when I was leading a transformation project, we generated $135 million in cost savings and spun off three businesses that I ended up being president of. When I was working with United Way, we transformed the campaign. Jim, you were part of this with me. We grew that campaign over the time I was there from 25 to $50 million in our city. When I worked at Aga Khan, I brokered international agreements, first time ever between Rotary International and Aga Khan University, organizations based in the US, as well as Pakistan. And you can't tell me that was not complicated and tough, but it was about listening and being open-minded and finding what the greater good was in these conversations. We have not seen this kind of leadership on council. Our current councillor is running. I've had every opportunity to demonstrate leadership. They cannot come together. And I have learned that in leadership is defined in crisis. And as we've been going through this pandemic, they still can't come together to serve Calgarians. So I'm offering my leadership skill at this time and my optimism and belief in this city 
this is what we need. The mayor is about a signal booster, the positivity that attracts and actually builds the bridges across multiple sectors. I worked in not-for-profit, again, revolutionizing, building sustainability, bringing a team together to actually build that infrastructure in Inglewood for the YWCA Calgary on time, on budget. I have many projects on the go. The city council has talked about plans, but no one has implemented them yet. And we need actually strong implementers. And that's what I'm offering in my leadership. Thanks, Jen. Um, Brad, it's, uh, it's 48 months from the uh, 18th of October, and you are now um, uh, looking back uh, as each of you uh, will be able to do and say, this is what success looks like for me. Um, so 48 months from now, when you look back, what, what, what does the city look like compared to what it is today? Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's that crystal ball that we're all, you know, we're all striving for. First of all, uh, a city council uh, that uh, citizens can be proud of. You know, at the end of the day, I've been asked this question in different forms uh, over time. And, and just, you know, Calgarians want council that they can be proud of and that they can trust. And right now the trust is uh, has been broken. So rebuild that trust, create that environment where we have a cohesive team, where instead of debating or arguing or slinging mud, we actually acknowledge good ideas from other people and say, hey, can we expand on that? That's what leadership is. That's not what we're seeing on council right now. It's more about sound bites and making headlines. And to me, I want to bring uh, council together, work together, go into every conversation with an open mind to learning and listening and collaborating, uh, create that environment, vibrant Calgary. Uh, I, everything I've done for three and a half years since I committed this was about the next generation. It's about my kids, my potential grandkids or great grandkids. What's going to keep them here in the city of Calgary? And so it is about the economy. It's about being vibrant. It's about being inclusive. All the things that we dream of is what I want to see. And in and you know, four years, maybe that's too quick. Maybe we won't get all the way there, but we should be on the right path towards that. And it starts with start, strong leadership. That's what we're lacking right now. That's what I bring to the table. Um, but you know, enough of this polarizing discussion and uh, sound bites. Uh, let's acknowledge good ideas. Even on this panel discussion today, I've heard some really good ideas from other candidates. Instead of slinging mud and being the contrarian, let's let's say, hey, Jeremy, that's a really good idea. Can we expand on that? Jeff, wonderful. Great. Let's expand. Jan, awesome. You know, instead of this ongoing narrative of it's not their way, it has to be my way, we got to change that approach. So uh, in a nutshell, just a better city council with true leadership. That's what I hope for. That's what I'm striving for. Jeremy, what does success look like for you in 48 months? I think success looks like stability. It looks like certainty. It looks like predictability. This has been such a tumultuous time for uh, Calgarians, for our province, for Canadians generally. And I think Calgarians, the, our community has felt the, the brunt of it. Uh, that's why I'm advocating to say, for example, four-year property tax freeze to be able to uh, throw a lifeline to give certainty for struggling families, businesses that they need to be able to succeed and to get back on their feet. And I also want to touch on relationships. I think that we need a, a great reset. So things like uh, even just council's relationship amongst ourselves. I think that there needs to be uh, uh, credit given where credit's due. Uh, I think that uh, you need a mayor who's willing to uh, share in the glory and not always be the, the face or the voice of things. I think council's relationship with the public needs to be restored. I think it's embarrassing that council has more time spent behind closed doors than any other major city. And it's tainted a lot of things like uh, the arena deal, the Olympic bid. I think that council's relationship with city staff needs to be reset, empowering the individuals who work at the city every single day to be able to bring forward their best possible work. Council's relationship with the business community. It shouldn't have to take uh, a business revolt and march by business owners uh, onto the steps of city hall to be treated fairly and to, to be listened to. I think council's relationship with the region as well is really important. You can't have a race to the bottom where Calgary taxpayers are subsidizing uh, say, uh, business to try to come from Red Deer. We need to hunt as a pack, a Team Alberta approach. And again, that relationship with the province is so important. I, won't, uh, I don't agree with everything the province has done, but I think we have to work together as a partner on things like uh, mental health, uh, recovery, treatment, flood mitigation, economic development, all the rest. And lastly, in terms of Calgary's relationship with the rest of Canada, we need to go on the road. We need to tell our cities an incredible story. We need to showcase all of the exciting talent 
that has chosen this community as home. We need to showcase our entrepreneurs, our, our business community. There's so much exciting stuff that's happening in our local community. And I think, again, we need to, we need to go on the hunt. We need to invite uh, Canadians to come to Calgary to be part of something. It can't be a passive economic development approach. So again, uh, stability, security, as well as the reset to the relationships. I think that that's what success looks like. Thanks, Jeremy. Jen, what, uh, what uh, would you describe success looking like after you've been in office for four years? Success looks like just that renewed optimism and vigor in this city, that this is this place of possibility that attracts people from, globe, from around the globe. But it also is um, a vision of where we are connected as a city. We're one of the most diverse cities in Canada, and we don't act that way. And this is about inclusivity and making sure that everybody is included in our recovery. It's about removing barriers to employment, barriers to business. Many of our newcomers into this city aren't feeling safe. Um, they're not able to actually get their foothold in their local businesses. This has been my great reflection during COVID, how important local economy is and how we invest in it. This actually is the way that we diversify and grow from the grassroots. And so for me, it's also having leadership that is respected. And so I share that with you, Brad, because we've not seen that on city council. I've been door knocking and people are embarrassed by the city council. And I'm just gonna make an observation that uh, councillors, uh, both, both, both Mr. Davis and Mr. Farkas talk about council as if they are not a part of it. They have been on this council for four years and have contributed to this dysfunction. And in my view, if you're part of the problem, you're not part of the solution. We need a complete fresh start, an absolute reset. I agree with you, Jeremy, on that. But it's about proven leadership that can bring people together to inspire. We have Muslim women working in our, walking around in our city not feeling safe. This is about, again, creating optimism, bringing us together, creating opportunity. And this is about supporting all of our sectors and actually driving that. And that's the role of mayor. The mayor, the role of mayor is not to bring your own ideas and actually ram them through. It's to build that consensus and coalition with the people that elect us. And that's what I'm offering as mayor going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Jeff, a little bit of two pound test there to see if we reel you in, not suggesting we should, but um, how, uh, how would you, do, how would you uh, describe uh, success looking after you've been in office for four years? I would say, first of all, I'm a proud member of council and say that uh, I've spent my time getting things done. And so, uh, you know, I've never uh, tried to act like I'm not part of a council. I always vote for it. But I think the last time I said I was with council, I was accused of being uh, too much I, I, I. So, you know, we'll just leave it at that. You know, I think uh, the next decade is really going to be about post-COVID recovery. I think we, in the next four years, will begin to bridge the gap of, of where we are now and I think where we want to be. And where we want to be is a thriving, dynamic, and, and affordable city for everyone. And so, you know, I, I remind people all the time that this is not about council and bickering. It's about Calgarians. It's about a better quality of life. It's about job growth and opportunity here again. Um, it's having a council, I think, that votes for economic stability, not one that causes the destabilization of investment in our city by continuing to chase headlines in the paper. Uh, we, have, we have and will succeed in uh, affecting further transition to our economy. Uh, to one that is is stable and relies less on the volatility of oil prices. We will be a talent magnet for the brightest minds and companies who are solving some of the world's biggest problems related to things like energy and food sustainability. Uh, and we'll be this because we've done the work and we've talked with the experts and we are now at a time where we require proven leadership to get it to work fast. And that's what I bring to the table is I'm a proven individual who goes out and does what I said I'm going to do. And I think, again, past behavior is a good indication of future behavior. Thanks, sir. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, Jeremy, I'm going to um, uh, tweak this a bit. We're, we're getting, I'm trying to watch a couple of screens here. We're getting a lot of questions about um, attracting talent. So, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll stick this into uh, this next question. How will you as mayor create a 21st century city that builds the youth talent pipeline necessary for the future of work? Uh, the addendum is how, Cal how does Calgary attract and retain young technology workers to live here versus other competitor cities in North America and around the world? Uh, and the additional piece um, from a number of, uh, of um, uh, participants is I'm looking for actual actions versus um, 
platitudes. Um, Jeremy, do you want to take a crack at that, please? Sure. So in terms of the specifics, I think we have something that uh, many other places don't, which is an affordable uh, housing stock within a reasonable commute to work. So I was recently chatting with one of my university friends. Uh, she had said uh, that she was feeling very upset living in a tin can, basically in Toronto with an hour commute each way. And she didn't feel like that was appropriate to be able to start a family. But Calgary has something that uh, other cities don't, like Montreal, Vancouver, and that's our committed advantage. So there's things like this guidebook debate where council's trying to ram through uh, density in places and communities that uh, frankly can't, don't have the infrastructure to accommodate it. So I'd wanna be preserving single family housing stock at affordable price point for Calgarians to be able to aspire to, to start a family. Next around uh, safety. I think that we need to show that Calgary is a, a safe jurisdiction, a place that any, anyone can feel safe to, to go around. And now Calgary is the only major city in North America without a permanent downtown police station. So I disagree with that defund the police ideology. I think we need to provide our essential services the, the resources that they need. I specifically disagreed with council's decision to start selling off parks as a revenue source. So there's a portion of Richmond Green Park where the ball diamonds are being sold. I think that selling off our inner city green space to developers, I think that that's misguided and it's actually the wrong direction. And it erodes our ability to compete uh, and attract uh, that kind of talent. So I think it, it all comes down to actually providing the services that Calgarians need at an appropriate price point that's affordable. Uh, I disagreed with council's decision to pursue, say, closure of recreation facilities in the downtown. Uh, I disagreed uh, that they didn't want to intervene to be able to say, save the uh, Eau Claire YMCA. If we don't want to continue to attract uh, talent and, and investment to Calgary, we want to make sure that we're uh, providing the services that uh, everyday folks, especially families, need at an affordable price point. So I think getting the fees, affordability under control is a big piece, but Calgary has a lot going for us. And we're not going to be out New York in New York. We're not going to out San Francisco, San Francisco, but there are many competitive advantages that we have that we should be leaning into rather than uh, a scattershot approach where uh, we're trying to be all things to all people. So again, I, I just emphasize on why do we have a city government in the first place? I think it's affordability, it's city services, and quality of life and safety. And I think those are the key parts to keeping Calgary as, again, one of those destinations of choice. My father came as a refugee from communist Hungary. He could have gone anywhere in the world, but he chose Calgary, he chose Alberta, and he chose Canada for a reason. And I know that we can get back to that as long as we had City Hall uh, uh, focused on the right things rather than uh, the wrong things. Thanks, Jeremy. Jen, um, do you need me to go through the question or you just want to jump right into it? How about I jump right into it? I'm going to just one oh. sec before we start. I've given you all, I'm going to give you all a little longer to answer this question. So Jeremy got three minutes and I'm going to give the rest of you three minutes as well. Um, just oh, oh, So hold it now. Who made you the person who decided when somebody gets more time? <laughs> my moderator title Jim, and also spirit messaging me in the background saying we should give a little longer on this you know, like it. Really I like it. Really am just reporting to Stuart here um well no. done Danny thank you so, Jen, got the... sorry sorry I went long I didn't mean to no, I just no, no. this is an important well, one and I would have yeah, I, this is this is this is one that deserves a little bit more time so um I am I am watching that and want to ensure you all have equal kind of equal time to answer so just three minutes. Three minutes is what we've up to this one too. Right on. Good stuff. Sorry to interject. You, go ahead, Jan. You, Jan. Thanks, Danny. I love that you've taken control of the agenda. You go, girl. So good. It, um, this, I think, is the fundamental issue facing our city, that we are a place that our young want to be, want to build their lives, want to grow their careers. Uh, you remember that I've got a 24-year-old that fled this city because we did not see a place of opportunity. And when I'm knocking with doors and talking to young people, because I've deliberately gone out, because I think this is about engagement and building their future, having their voice at the table. And they've told me there is nothing to do in this city. There is nothing exciting about this city because we've actually over our history, particularly in the last 15, 20 years, have not invested in the public realm. We're starting to make those plans. We're sort of, we've fallen behind, but we've got to invest in the infrastructure that is going to drive things to do. And it's building on our strengths. I agree. It's not about being another city. We can learn from what other cities have done, but we have amazing nature and access to space. And it's also how do we connect ourselves so we're not bypassed to get out to the mountains. 
So in my very detailed platform, I've been deliberate about this because this becomes a vision and a platform that we can coalesce all of us around driving this forward, is we're going to actually make Calgary the location. It's about connecting us to the mountain via train. It's about making sure we have a revitalized downtown core that needs investing in entertainment and our local art scene into Main Street. We have one walkable street downtown. Ironically, in the 70s, when we put those plus 15s, we killed downtown. We've just been a place of work. We have to get people living and working downtown. That's why we've got to encourage and incentivize our post-secondaries to get students living and working downtown. I want to be able to have a Reuben sandwich downtown at 3 a.m. One of my favorite memories growing up uh, and living in another city where there was a robust kind of inner city university. So this is about the vibe that creates. And when we have that vibe, it actually attracts businesses and the talent that will actually help us scale all of those tech companies and organizations that are trying to scale. So this is the vision and purpose that we're trying to create. I've talked a lot about putting the cool back into Calgary, right? Let's take advantage of these amazing rivers. How do we leverage that? Surf park on the Bow River that also again drives that interest. And I am got a detailed plan about public transit. We again, our four quadrants do not meet. We have to invest. This also helps us take meaningful action on climate change by reducing our carbon footprint, but making sure that our young people, and that's what they're asking for. They don't wanna own a car. Our city's been designed for a car. We've gotta give alternative transportation. We've gotta make sure that there is contiguous biking lanes that we can actually walk in the winter on sidewalks with 100 pound labs, which I happen to own without fearing of breaking the hip. We've got to invest in mobility and making actually services accessible in neighborhood by neighborhood. And we have completely under-resourced neighborhoods in the North. So I am committed as mayor and to bring this vision together and bring us all together. So it is about we, that we really also resource a lot of those neighborhoods in our city that have been under-resourced and bring us together. This is what we are needing and that, that people feel safe, included and a part of this great vision. I know in my vast extensive experience in leading people, when they participate in creating, they buy in. That's the leadership I'm offering and the vision I'm offering for this city. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jim. Jeff? I think based on the time we're going over time here, I should, uh, I should start writing up the speech of a lifetime. Um, no, look, I think it's, uh, I've been focused on this for four years, really, and, and beyond. And I think it really comes down to the intersection of, of place, business environment, innovation, and talent. And that's what it takes to build a great city and, and really think about, you know, how do we maintain ourselves as a, a mid-sized city that is affordable, livable, and socially stable. Uh, and, and the point being to that is that people have more choices and options than ever before. And so we need to make Calgary their first choice. Uh, that is that place component, building things here in Calgary that gives people things to do and, and want to be here. That, that is just a critical component of, of building a great city, having the right business environment where, again, we can you know, ensure that our competitiveness uh, is, is better than any other jurisdiction, in particular in Western Canada, is, is a goal here that uh, I plan to get done in the next 100 days. Uh, it's really about how do we set the right regulatory environment to, to, to ensure that our local businesses succeed, but that we continue to be an attractive investment jurisdiction for uh, companies from all around the world. And then really focusing on things like innovation and how are we going to future proof our economy, uh, you know, and actively supporting growth sectors that build on, on those strengths, uh, like I say, in energy, agriculture, fintech, um, aerospace, uh, and, and as well as going after new opportunities together. And, you know, ultimately, again, the catalyst to all of this is, is thinking about the talent component and, and making sure that we become an attractive environment for young people in particular. You know, they're not... Young people right now are not leaving Calgary uh, to go to Vancouver and Toronto because it's cheaper. They're going there for different opportunities, different career paths, different ways of life, different things to do in a municipality. And so we've got to think differently again about where that comes back to the four pillars of place and, and compete very differently in a world where I think capital and talent are extremely mobile. And I think post COVID has really shown that uh, people don't need to be anywhere anymore. Uh, but we want them to choose Calgary as we have all chosen to live here, uh, you know, and, and we want the next generation to continue to choose here. Brad, how does uh, Calgary attract and retain young workers, let alone technology workers, to live here versus uh, other cities uh, around the world? Well, here's the first one. All great answers. 
I mean, at the end of the day, and hats off to every one of you, you know, it's what we all want for the city of Calgary and, you know, maintaining and retaining and attracting new talent to the city of Calgary. So, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that was said in the last three answers that isn't accurate and, and what we all want. Uh, you know, I think the difference is, is around, okay, so let's get something done then. Uh, we're all talking about it. How are we going to actually do it? Um, I've committed uh, with my thousands of conversations with that next generation. I started having conversations with high school students uh, three, four months ago that aren't even eligible to vote about what they want for the future of city of Calgary. Uh, because when you're talking about the next generation, why aren't we, why don't we have them at the table from the get-go? Uh, I've committed, uh, if elected as mayor, to form a, a youth uh, 2030 advisory council that will have direct access to the mayor's office and city council. Again, it goes back to if we're going to build a, a Calgary for the future, let's have the, the, the future occupants of the city at the table right from the get-go. I love talking about infrastructure uh, to Jan and to all your points, uh, great things about infrastructure, uh, you know, arts, entertainment, culture, the entertainment district, um, you know, arts commons expansion, Glenbow uh, renovation. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, Brewery Row. I keep on talking about, we have this wonderful microbrewery industry here in the city of Calgary that have won awards. Uh, why aren't we creating a, a brewery role, a music role? Uh, uh, we have the Bell Mu uh, Music Center, National Music Center. Uh, let's dovetail into that and have a music mile. Um, so there's so many opportunities to create, uh, create this wonderful atmosphere for the city of Calgary, making sure the town stays in the city of Calgary. Let's work together with post-secondary institutions. Let's get, when I talk to the next generation, they want to live work, educate, and play in the downtown core. So let's continue the conversation around how we create that vibrant downtown core where that next generation wants to live. 21st century companies are gonna go where the talent is. If we keep the talent here, they will come. But we also gotta remember, we gotta remove regulatory roadblocks here in the city of Calgary. We have to make it easier to do business in the city of Calgary. Right now, and I say this with all due respect to current council members, you guys can stand on a mountaintop all day long and say that we're open for business. We are not open for business in the city of Calgary in any way, shape or form. Uh, until we correct that, until we actually back up our words with actions, nothing's going to change. Doesn't matter how vibrant our downtown Calgary is. Until we change how we do business in the city of Calgary, no one's coming. So we have to change that narrative. And I'd love to expand on the rail to Banff. I've been talking about it for three and a half years. I'm glad everybody's on board now. I don't care who gets credit for it. Uh, it's a fantastic idea. It's a game changer for the city of Calgary and Southern Alberta. Let's get that rail connection from YYC to downtown and then expand it out to uh, the Banff. That will uh, create uh, a wonderful environment, uh, both social, socially as well as economically. So thanks very much. Uh, let's get some shit done. Thanks, Brad. Uh, Jan, what, uh, moving on to another question, what do you believe is the culture at City Hall and what do you see as necessary to change there, if anything? Such a good question, Jan. The, the culture is fractured and I, and I, and I think we've, because we've had such dysfunction on council, um, with the divisiveness and uh, pet projects and grandstanding. Um, it also has actually put administration in the position where they're actually always having countermeasures against council to try to protect sort of running the day-to-day -day, day of the city. I'm seeing lack of governance um, at city council, which is rippling actually into city administration. And that's why we actually need a leader in the mayor's chair that understands governance and can actually start to correct just how the culture both at council and city administration is happening. And so it's going to even back to what Brad was just talking about and how that ripples out is in the divisiveness and sort of the, the conflicting priorities. And, and when it comes to actually businesses and you know even relative to the audience today, getting in the way of our entrepreneurs starting new businesses and trying to scale businesses, I mean, we regulate um, businesses through land use. And depending who you, whose file has at the city hall, you can actually get different answers, which goes to this regulatory uncertainty. But are we surprised that there's so much uncertainty in this process when we think of the divisiveness and the spinning that goes around at city council? Um, we've just gone, we, I mean, we're in the midst of a pandemic and this is a council that can't even get it together and do some work ahead of time in drafting motions in dealing with mask mandates as well as vaccine passports. They're doing the work on the floor and pontificating why or why not they can't actually work together to serve the city. 
and this spins out and just creates chaos um, in, in city administration. So this needs to be a complete reset in culture. What I have learned to be true in, in my leadership is people have to have clear priorities as opposed to conflicting priorities. And we have to be actually working towards a common vision. And once we get that clarity, it's getting out of the way and letting people do what they do really well. That they have a sense of mastery and autonomy in doing this work. It's not Thanks, about being city. Um, thank you. Um, I can go on for um, a long time. There's lots of work. Well, no, um, clear, clearly you're excited, Jen. This is good. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff um, uh, you've, you've lived it. Why, why, don't you, uh, why don't you tell us what your perspective is from, from the inside? Yeah, I mean, I think, look, there's always changes. There's always improvements you can make. I think it really comes down to ensuring that you work with a new council, and in particular, a very green council, to understand process and procedure and understand that clear direction and relationships are needed. And so really my goal is getting back to making sure that administration uh, promotes a culture of accountability and, and that understanding that we have to compete very differently in a world where every other municipality out there is competing differently and they're attracting investment faster. Our job is to think about how we move through the processes quicker, how we stand up our businesses and become enablers, not roadblocks. And I think there's a lot of people at the city that value that. And so, you know, we also have to recognize that rather than slag on all of our employees, we have over 16,000 employees now at the city of Calgary, uh, that we value their expertise. Uh, you know, when it comes to various departments, uh, we don't value the expertise they bring to the table because we're too busy nitpicking over policy and ideology and that is a, that's a holdup and it's caused a culture of fear of decision making. I wanna make sure that our, our go forward is that our staff is able to make decisions. They are able to move things quickly because as, as everybody forgets, they're taxpayers too. They care about the job they're doing. They care about the city they're building. And so enabling them to move quicker is, is a priority of mine. Right on. Um, Brad, fire away. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, there's no question. I, again, as, as a vendor with the City of Calgary for 25 years, I've worked with city administration and cost-saving measures, worked with, you know, 15, 16,000 employees in different, uh, uh, in different opportunities. But yeah, there's no question there's a fracture uh, in council, but that uh, it permeates right down through city administration, right through the 16,000 staff. And, and I will uh, continue to shout from a mountaintop that uh, 16,000 employees, City of Calgary, come to work every day wanting to do the right thing uh, and create value for citizens of Calgary. They're not allowed to. The system is broken. Uh, it's not a people issue. It's a system issue. And tone starts at the top, right from the mayor's chair and, and cascades down through city administration. Uh, so there's no question we have to set the tone very early um, and, and start empowering. And I'm, I'm glad uh, Jeff spoke to it because uh, that's been a part of the problem. We, we don't empower our city employees. I use this example. I've got a, a good relationship with a, a person with City of Calgary, 35 years, and um, good, hardworking person that I'm sure is making probably $200,000 a year, plus, plus, plus. And he says to me, he says, Brad, I don't leave my office unless I'm told to. And I'm saying, come on you got to do better than that. And he says, Brad, I used to innovate. I used to bring cost saving measures. I've been kicked in the teeth so many times. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just putting in time. And that uh, message, that uh, story is uh, very relevant in many cases throughout the city of Calgary. So let's empower the city of Calgary employees. Let's bring back some respect and decorum to uh, city council chambers. Uh, there's no question we can do a better job. Uh, that's what I bring to the table. That's what I've done all my life. It's about collaboration and teamwork. It's not about sound bites. I don't care who gets the credit. Let's just move in a positive way to uh, to a greater Calgary. Jeremy, what, uh, what do you believe is the culture at City Hall and what do you see, if anything, is necessary to change there? I think uh, the, the closed door nature is an issue. I think for a long time, we've had leadership that insists that it be the, the smartest in the room. And I think that does a disservice to Calgarians, especially members of the community who really wanna be able to bring to the table like their thoughts, their constructive criticisms to be able to help. I think that we really need uh, what I've heard described as kind of a, a wartime effort to all hands on deck to be able to rally the community. And so often community leaders, they come to the table and they try to give advice, but the recommendations are just put on the shelf. So I want to see uh, more uses of uh, SWAT teams or task forces and actually empower these people to be able to go out as leaders to actually 
canvas, get the ideas so that by the time they come back to council, that it's actionable and all they need is basically the permission to, to go. But we have a lot of great people working at the city and the question is how do we empower them? Uh, there's a lot of managers managing managers. It's a very top heavy organization. So the challenge is for council, I think we have to act as a board would. Uh, eyes in but fingers out, uh, empowering our people, giving credit where it's due, and also taking ownership when things don't go wrong and when, say, uh, the city takes risks but it doesn't pan out. But there's a number of issues where this has played out where the, the city hall establishment has been uh, really hostile to the public. Things like uh, the guidebook. We had more than 40 community associations come to the table wanting to be part of the solution. Uh, painting a picture positively of how they wanted to see development happen. Instead, they were demonized. Other issues say around the green line, the, the city CFO advised council about being over leveraged on many of these major projects and many in the community with uh, very deep uh, engineering and project management experience came to the table wanting to provide uh, their recommendations about how we could actually build it in an effective way. Instead, uh, they were villainized. Other issues like say the, the defund the police agenda, city council agreeing with statements like uh, that the very foundation of policing is racist, making such extreme claims like that, that it's driven away a lot of the front line and people who want to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. So I think that again, the culture needs to change in a way that empowers everyday Calgarians and it doesn't leave politicians being the smartest in the room. Thank you uh, very much, all of you. Um, we're gonna close with one final question and uh, be well within the, the uh, 1.15 finish time that, uh, that, we, um, that we promised. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to tighten it a little bit. Um, uh, I would say as a, as a comment, I, I think we've dealt with almost everything uh, with the exception of, of some specifics that people have thrown up on the board, at least that I could see. So uh, my, my compliments to Stuart and Danny for, for the questions and uh, getting them into a format that, uh, that the four of you could uh, respond to. Um, this, this is a question, um, I'm not going to give the stats that are, that are in it, but it basically is, what do you see as the, as the potential of women uh, in, in City Hall, if I'm reading this correctly, and how, how do you see engaging that potential in our, uh, in our city? Is that, Danny, can you nod your head? Is that, is that paraphrasing that accurately? Uh, I didn't want to get into all of the, all of the, 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 the pieces behind it that would suggest that there's already an answer in the question, so to speak. Um, I'm not sure that's the case, but, um, uh, Jeff, do you want to um, do you want to take a take a crack at that, uh, or or do I need to clarify the question more? Well, I mean, you know, I think you really have to look at the why, Jeff. I think it's because access to opportunity is for everyone, right? And we have to recognize that we need better representation uh, that is more reflective of our population. And so, you know, I, I completely agree. I saw the question in the chat. I agree with it. I mean, I think the challenge is is if we leave change to other people, it will never happen. And so how do we make that change happen? Do we, do we create a better system? I mean, I, I know, I think the question came from the 51. Um, I mean, it's, it's really about how do you create better mentoring opportunities to ensure that we prepare people uh, and that we enable people. And, and you know, I think there's, it, it's a big challenge in the city. And so, you know, all I can say is that as the, uh, as the middle-aged white guy running in this election, we're committed to figuring that out and we're committed to working with organizations to forge that path forward because i really do believe we can't leave change to other people uh this is a this is a conversation we've seen happen over the past decades it's uh it's time to recognize that opportunity is in calgary for everyone and that we provide that access and, and take the necessary steps to ensure that we actually take meaningful action rather than continue to talk about it thanks jeff um uh, brad i'm going to go to you but just as you're as, as the, the remaining three are thinking about their answer maybe what i'll do um when um when uh jan you'd be the last to speak on this uh, give you each a minute just to wrap and and uh and uh, provide the audience with uh with your final thoughts um, if that's of use um so if that makes sense jan over to you on the on the question about uh women in uh, in our province and city and, and just so I understand, Jim, so to address the question and, and finish with a minute, or are you going to go through another round? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go through another round. I'll, 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 I'll come back to each of you so you can kind of gather those thoughts now, too. Yeah. So we have an opportunity in this election because we actually have qualified women running to the air. So one thing is about action. Maybe we actually elect a female mayor. 
for the first time in the history of our city. And I don't say that tritely because it's about qualifications and what I have learned in all the work that I've done with YWCA in United, in United Way overseas with the Agra Khan Development, Development Network, we have to actually, people can be what they can see. And it's how do we break down the barriers? And I, you know, I've said earlier today, when we think about the culture of our city and our community, about really embracing the diversity, it's not only gender, it's, it's other cultures, other ethnic um, populations. How do we ensure that, uh, that we are actually removing the barriers to both employment and providing opportunity? And uh, we have a huge role to play at the city uh, to actually stamp out systemic racism. Uh, they, we are one of the cities in Canada that is the least safe for women. And we've got to be actually starting to take this very seriously. And a lot of it is about electing and having the voices at the table that can actually represent this perspective. Uh, Calgary has had a dismal uh, reputation in terms of what they've elected in terms of officials. Um, I was even quoted on the weekend about the added barriers, females, even when we're in this sort of an election, the abuse we take, uh, the misogyny that we take, um, those of us who have extensive leadership experience in getting things done are actually referred to as staffers and somehow not qualified. I was even asked this morning, why didn't I run for councillor first? And my answer to that question is because I'm qualified to be mayor. And I actually believe in terms of being the future of the, the sort of the future city that we need to be. It's about driving forward and showing that we're progressive and that we actually can tackle the big issues. So it's about actually representation. And we have the opportunity in this election to elect our first female mayor and the right female mayor. Thanks, Jen. Brad? Yeah, first of all, thank you, Jan. Yeah, you bring, obviously, you've got lived experience. So I'll acknowledge that right out of the get-go. Um, yeah, I am a middle-aged white man. Jeff, I think I'm a little bit older than you, but that's beside the point. Um, yeah, you know what? It is. We've got an opportunity here to do it differently. Um, I, I think back uh, in my organizations, I, I'm 60% of my executive team are female. Um, and it's, it's not something I planned, it just is. Uh, and uh, so I've been open minded to that and making sure that uh, everybody has opportunity in the city of Calgary, but also being a champion too. You know, we're talking about uh, affordable childcare uh, at the federal level and provincial level. When that comes available, all of us as leaders on this call must get behind that and make sure that there's affordable childcare to make sure that there's nothing, no barriers for any uh, woman to come into politics or any organization for that matter. So removing barriers, uh, making it easier for everybody to have the same opportunities here in the city of Calgary. Uh, and just, you know, I'll champion that all day long, but I'm also open to learning and uh, being educated too as well. So thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Brad. Jeremy? Thank you for the question. I'm the first openly LGBTQ city councillor and I've been told that because of who I am, I'm not deserving of love or my current role, let alone being mayor. But I got into public service because I wanted to build a city where every single Calgarian can succeed, regardless of where they came from, regardless of who their parents were, regardless of their faith, regardless of their gender, regardless of who they love. And I feel very, very strongly about city, city uh, council and Calgarians taking a, a stand on issues like these. And I, in the chat, I think the there's not just, it's been highlighted, there's not just the social or moral dimension to this, there's the economic dimension to greater participation of uh, various minority groups. And in the chat, it, it was mentioned that the added GDP of increased women's participation in the economy in Alberta is a staggering number, 21.3 billion. And it also emphasized the, the participation in Alberta's tech companies was just fantastic. So societies with uh, greater equality, not only better offer uh, socioeconomic opportunities, they also tend to grow faster and more equitably. And for example, the, the World Bank, uh, I believe found that women played such a critical role in the decline of poverty with it being the female labor market income that contributed to a 30% reduction in extreme poverty 
over about, I think it was a decade span. So this is an issue that uh, Calgarians and city council and our next mayor cannot afford to ignore. And it's something that I'd continue to carry forward if elected mayor to ensure that Calgarians realize that we are only Calgary because of the fact that we've been so welcoming to so many others, regardless of their creed or origin. So again, thank you for the question. Excellent uh, comments to be made specifically around the economic uh, cost and opportunities. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, Brad, do you want to uh, take a minute and, uh, and make a pitch for, uh, for, your, uh, for your, um, uh, your candidacy? Yeah, everybody's, and just checking, everybody's spoken on this last question, just to make sure. I believe so, yeah. Okay, all right, sorry. Yeah, yeah my thank apologies. You. Um, so, uh, sorry, Jim, could you repeat the question? I'm, I'm just doing a wrap up. Yeah, you got a minute to. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, first of all, thank you to the organizers, Jim and Danny. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you to their candidates. Honestly, lots of great answers. So appreciate your attendance. Uh, very respectful. I love, I love this part of the dialogue is where we can be respectful and, and, uh, uh, opening and welcoming to other people's ideas. We've got an, uh, an awesome opportunity for change here in the city of Calgary, uh, you know, to bring about a, a new age some, and build something special, something we can be proud of. Uh, I've been in Calgary 50 years, raised my family here, uh, married my high school sweetheart. I want to make Calgary uh, home for not just my kids, but every Calgarian and people uh, to attract people from around the world to come here and call home. We've got the we've got the single greatest asset here in the city of Calgary is its people, you know, and, and erase all the infrastructure and entertainment district, all that in the mountains. It's people. And that's something special that we have here in the city of Calgary. I love the opportunity uh, to grow the economy, create that environment where jobs and businesses can flourish again and bring back uh, strong leadership within the city of Calgary. Uh, my only uh, uh, sad point is it's too bad I can't work with all of you when I become mayor. So uh, thanks again for the opportunity and uh, look forward to ch further chats down the road. Uh, have a wonderful day and thanks again for having me. Jeremy, uh, why don't, why don't uh, what did you uh, wrap, please? Thanks. Uh, when, when my family came as refugees, they saw our city as so much more than just a place to find a job. They, they saw it as something you can, you can hardly find anywhere else in this world which is a promise of a fresh start. And a lot of doors were closed to my parents, but as Calgarians, they worked really hard to make sure those doors were made open to me. And while I didn't have a lot of money growing up, I had a ton of opportunity. And over the last decade, I've seen Calgarians struggle with lack of opportunity. We've witnessed the economy struggle, we've seen the tax burden increase, and we've seen the city hall establishment uh, become more and more out of touch. And I'm running for mayor to bring about real change. I'm very excited to start rolling out our detailed 10 point blueprint for change. And you can find that at jeremy.ca. But I really want to help Calgarians get our city back on top where we belong. And again, if elected mayor, I'd be focusing on three priorities. Firstly, a strong and growing economy based on financial responsibility. Second, open and transparent uh, government. Lastly, secure and vibrant communities. And I know that Calgarians have what it takes to, to come back uh, stronger than ever. So I think it's time for City Hall to work for the people again. And thank you for this opportunity here with you. Thanks, Jeremy. Jen? Yeah, thanks so much for the opportunity again. And I've, I've again, really enjoyed the conversation. And, and I think you know, we're all talking about, right, um, sort of launching the city so it can really claim its potential uh, and really sort of feed sort of all of those businesses and entrepreneurs that have struggled so much, particularly during this pandemic. I think the defining issue in this election is leadership and the proven ability to bring people together from diverse perspectives to get things done. So we're all moving in the right direction, that we're creating that, that city that's modern, where people actually can reach their potential, where barriers are removed, and we are far more representative of the diversity of our city. That's the vision I'm presenting. It's, it's the leadership that I'm offering because I've built coalitions all of my career in very complex organizations. It's about governance. And we have the opportunity to elect our first female mayor that also is a signal booster to what is possible in this city. So I look forward to um, gaining your support. Momentum is building and it is about vision because one of the outcomes is that my 24 year old comes back because he sees the amazing opportunity that is here and I can be a grandmother institute. So thanks again for that. Thanks, Jen. Jeff? Yeah, thanks, thanks Jim. Thanks for everybody for hosting and being here and taking time out of your lunch. Uh, you know, past behavior is the most reliable predictor of future behavior. I'll said it before and I'll say it again. And if you believe that as I do, then who should be your next mayor? 
complex problems require complex solutions and any of my opponents who try to dumb that down do a complete disservice to Calgarians. I think I've worked with the experts. We have the plan. It's time to get to work. And, and being a mayor is a, a vital role that requires experience. And frankly, my last four years have shown what I'm going to do in the next four years. And as mayor, I'm going to help this city grow to over 2 million residents. And it's made possible because of where we live and who we're able to attract to this increasingly vibrant city. It's possible because of our history of uh, as innovators and, of course, because Calgarians continue to make this place an affordable, high quality place to live. And so it will take Calgarians saying yes, it will take leadership like I've shown over the past four years. But I can tell you as a lifelong Calgarian, uh, the comeback of our lifetime starts now. And if you'd like to hear more, go to Jeff Davis and YYC .com. Jeff, thank you very much, Jen. Thank you, Brad. Jeremy, thanks for your time. Uh, Danny. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw it over to you to wrap up. Appreciate all your all your participation, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. I know that um, you're all busy, so it's a pre we appreciate you taking the time out to um, speak to our audience. Um, thank you, audience members, for taking time out of your days. I know you are also all busy um, entrepreneurs and tech leaders and all sorts of you know community members who have have busy lives, especially right now. Um, so again, thank you. I also wanted to take a quick minute to thank our supporters um, who've helped us get the word out to the tech and entrepreneurship and innovation community. So the A100, um, Blue Sky Equities, Intergen, Properly Investment Company, Thin Air Labs, and Zinc all came together to help us bring this bring this panel together and, and bring the participants um, participants on board. So thank you again for that. Um, and I also want to encourage everyone to go out and vote. I got this in the mail yesterday. Um, so make sure you take a minute to peek through that. Um, voting is so important. Um, you know, my mom texts me every election day, you know, federal, provincial, civic, and says that women have died for the right to vote not that long ago. And it's really important to get out there and do that. Um, you know, regardless of regardless of where where you lean or stand. Um, so I am going to leave you all with that. Um, so thank you so much, Jim, for hosting. Much appreciated. Yes, um, for you taking the time out as well. And um, even though you said some mean things to me this morning, I'll let those slide. <laughs> um, and, and then I'm sure we'll we'll be working yeah. together again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You haven't heard you haven't heard me say mean things, Danny. <laughs> bring it on, bring it on. Um, I can take it. All right, guys. Thank you again. We'll Thanks, wrap everybody. Have a, right have a great Tuesday. On the dot. Have a great day. Take care.